What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Pam Pod, the podcast where we talk about not twi- gaming and Twitch news anymore. Uh, I'm your host, yeah. Pan the Man, and joined by me here today is my co-host, X Men Three Thousand. X Men, how are you doing today? Um, we're washed. We're washed. We're old and washed. We're old and washed. Uh, so yeah, no more Twitch news. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. We just kind of do our own thing now, and I, I kind of like it that way. We can't talk about the same stuff forever. I think. Doing, we just kind of do our own thing, and uh, the people know. So you know, we go, we go crazy, and yeah, man. H- how are you doing? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling, dude? I'm not gonna lie. I woke up at like eight, and I went to physics, and then I did physics homework until we started the podcast today. So well, my brain is fried, and it's greatness. Yeah, I I told you before the podcast, I was freaking. New song out. We'll talk about that in a minute. But man, I was editing that song, and holy, I I messed up my. Sleep. Every time a new song comes out, I uh, I mess up my sleep pretty bad because I announced the deadline. I'm like, everything's got to be ready. The promo's got to be ready. I got to get everything nice and. And man, I just fixed my sleep last night. I was up for a literal two days, so I felt like ass. Um, but now I feel a lot better. Sleep is fixed. Ate some good food. Doing good. Doing good. X Man's feeling good, and I'm just in a downward spiral spiral of math that may contain numbers or may not contain numbers anymore. I'm into the alphabet of mathematics, so um, it's a lot of fun. I'm pretty much hammered for the rest of next week with a lot of. I have a calculus exam which I'm not prepared for because I've been doing physics a lot. Oh, so um, that's what I'm, you know, most focused on right now. Um, but yeah, nobody cares about my degree or sure. my college on this YouTube channel. So we're going to get right into the swing of things. X-Man 3000 dropped a new song called Blood on My Hands. X-Man, give us a rundown. Yeah, man. It's, you know, I like to have similar elements with all my songs, but this one, it's definitely a different vibe. Uh, I, li- I like to do that every song. Every every song is a different vibe. Um, Originally, I never—I don't think I've told anyone this yet—but originally, it was supposed to be two songs. Uh, Blood of my hands was going to be the songs. Uh, it was going to be the title for both songs. You know how people drop two packs. You know, yeah. One song in the song. And I had another song was going to be on it, but I was like, this one is good enough on its own, and uh, I didn't have the other one finished. And I knew I wanted to drop February, so no matter what, I was going to drop something February. I just kind of had an outlined plan for it. And uh, it's pretty sick. Uh, there's a beat switch up. Everyone loves that part. It's a uh, yeah, it's very weird because, you know, I drop a, like a lo-fi song and then next thing you know, I'm dropping some like crazy 808s and stuff. But yeah, so far people like it. I think it's like 170 views or something right now. It's doing pretty good. Numbers aren't bad. And I haven't, I, I bought some ads for it and the ads haven't, haven't uh, even activated yet. So I'm like, oh, nice. You yeah, know, we're going up there. It's good. Waiting for that natural viewership just to see your... Um your investment yeah. take off um, when you promote that song, which is pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah, dude, I really like the switch of the flow. And the first time I listened to it, it was actually in my car. Oh, and, yeah. um, how that, dude, how that sound? Yeah, dude. And for people that don't know, um, in my, I, I drive a Jeep and in the Jeep, it, it pretty much, it kind of has a shitty sound system or like it didn't come with like the deluxe package. It was kind of like the, yeah. the base model, you know what I mean? So, um, through my job, I bought a 15-inch subwoofer, and that shit thumps in my car. So, dude, it's it's pretty cool. And if you guys haven't listened to it, go down in the comment section, the description, yeah. and um, go to X Man's YouTube channel, watch it, be or listen to it because yeah. it's pretty good. It's on YouTube. It's on SoundCloud. I don't know if people don't. I put it on BandLab and Audio Mac, even though people don't actually use that shit. I don't really, really pr- promote that, but it still gets plays on there somehow. Uh, I have a decent audience on BandLab because that's where all like the music nerds are and stuff. But um, yeah, I've only played it in the car once, so it was very um, you know, because when you mix stuff, it sounds different everywhere. You Isn't that it, the deciding factor in like a song? It was like how it sounds like in the car. Kind of, um. But your boy doesn't have a car. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. No, I I like to describe my music. I usually use it. Um, good example. I say it's. It, I make headphone music. That's the best way I describe my music. It's the music you listen to when you're just chilling by yourself, and then and that's the that's the way I because that's the way I listen to my music. So that's the kind of music I make. But um, yeah, if you guys want to check it out, definitely go do it. YouTube, SoundCloud. It's it's dope, and I appreciate everyone who's shown love. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So about that title, what do you mean by that? Man, oh my god! Oh shit! A lot of my, you know, I have all the lyrics in the description. I don't, I, I don't know if anyone knows that, but um, 
or like I I think my last song I started putting lyrics in all my description now. So the full lyrics are there. So if you guys want to go decipher it, go do that because uh I don't like to explain my songs fully because I feel like it's all about music is all about interpretation and I want uh, I interpret it one way and uh you know, like when you listen to it, you'll interpret it a whole nother way. Uh, but I will say the basic concept is basically, um, I got a good comparison. Have you ever listened to J. Cole, uh, Born Sinner? I don't think I have, actually. Well, you know, Born Sinners, or we're all born sinners. No one's perfect. Blood on my hands means you're guilty in almost in some way. Like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's basically, um, it, it's a very weird concept. I don't think a lot of people would understand, but yet it seems simple, but it's not. Um, it's just the idea uh, of temptation, avoiding it, and uh, life, basically overall life decisions, I guess. That's the best way I can describe it. it is, I know that doesn't really make sense, but if you listen to it, you'll understand it. Boom. Boom, and we're back. Yeah, but um, it, it's basically what I'm saying with the song. It, it is a deep concept that, I can't really explain with like a simple explanation. Every line kind of means its own thing. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. You're keeping it ambiguous and like that's interesting. You're kind of taking that English teacher approach. Like yeah. you're not you're not really like adding like a story or anything. The whole to point it. is it's supposed to be mysterious, you know. And that's that's probably good. No, like yeah, I, I had someone at my school come up to me and they're like, um, because there was like, uh, something something uh. I, I might just smoke a pound now. And they're like, what, you smoke? I'm like, no, I don't. And they're like, what? The bar completely flew over the head. And if you listen to the song, you know what I'm talking about. And you might, you might, even if you listen to the song, you might not even understand it. But, um, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, everything doesn't have to be taken literally all the time. Yeah, I, I think mean. that's the thing I'm... I even said it in the song. I think this is the best way to look at it. Um, I think one of the beat, one of the parts, one of the beat switch, I was like... I'll be speaking in code. My flow elevates. That's pretty much the whole song. Okay. I'm speaking in code. You just got to decipher it pretty much. And then it all makes sense. Yeah. I feel like if we, I'm not going to, you know, go bar for bar trying to <laughs> decipher the whole song and the meanings because there's definitely more than just one. But yeah. It's not a freestyle. Like this is all like well thought out and like, you know, yeah. there's, there's levels to it obviously. And there's like, you know, yeah. there's stuff It's rewatchability, which is really cool. And it's secures you some more views, which is cool and makes it more interesting, which is pretty awesome. And I think it's a good strategy, to be honest. So, yeah, I like to keep it. I feel like um, you notice that with a lot of like, you know, like the lyrical people. You ever heard of Dax? No, I don't think I have actually. If anyone knows who Dax is, that's a good example. People are saying his shit is so cringe, his music is terrible, but he's a good rapper. He's a very good rapper. But there's a difference between when he says something impactful compared to when Kendrick Lamar does it. You can't be like, let's say, um, it's about how you say it. Sometimes it's not all about like when you say, "Oh, my life's so hard." If you 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 have to be able to rap and preach without saying it straight yeah. up. If you say everything straight up, you're just gonna come off as corny. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, like my life sucks. Yeah, I'm you, from Section Five housing. Yeah, which you can mention that, but it's just all how you deliver and yeah. how you say it. That that's what matters, and I think a lot of you know people who make music they don't get that, but yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, um, that's cool. One thing I will say, kind of segue it right here. One thing I was looking at. Um, have you heard of uh, people going a little crazy over Lil Yachty's new album? No, I haven't even. I haven't even seen that. I don't even know. Talk to me about. It. I don't listen to Lil Yachty like that. But the importance with it is the cover art. Now the cover art is AI made, and let me tell you, is I, that Dolly too? Um, I don't know what that is. That's that's, that's like what the it's main called? the that's main right. AI. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I there's a f- quite a few of them. I I checked at some myself. And dude, that shit is crazy. I wanted to talk about that just because I was looking at try to. I was making my own covers with AI art. It is it is crazy. I bro. know it's really good. I made some cursed stuff though. Yeah, like I can I I went and combined like a blood on my hands cover with like my four 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 cover. It right. made some like literal demon shit. It was so scary. Dude, I scared myself. I was like, "Get this off my computer!" <laughs> yeah, bro. Because what, what like a computer can come up with? If you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's um AI um image generation. You give it a prompt, and it, it spits out a n- image that is not anywhere on the internet. It made it itself. So, say you wanted to, you wanted an orange robot with a black outline and the cartoon font. It would spit that out for you, and it's not perfect because it looked kind of scuffed. Um, and it doesn't do well with letters, I've figured out. Um, but it does 
yeah. look really good if you're very specific and like there's a whole thing where it's like artists are kind of scared because the artists were kind of the people that were like um ai is going to affect us the least because art is a human thing Holy. that um, robots can't really get their head around think again and um it's it's turned to graphic designers that are kind of at the the base level they're like you know that it's like 50 bucks for like an icon or like your pfp or whatever um now you could just put you know your what you want into this generator and get what you want for free in like 30 seconds so i mean it's it's there's kind of like an an ethical thing about it where it's like artists you know they're scared that their jobs are going to be taken away and it's like well number one l you know yeah. you gotta like you gotta move with the times you gotta figure something out um and two like it's it's all about convenience and it sucks but you know um it's really cool and actually uh, last last week we talked about how i was going to a club oh, and yeah? uh that club that night um they had they started a competition for the logo for the club where we had to go in oh, to wow. Dolly to and make them a logo and I'll edit it in uh what what we're gonna be looking at here because um I did make a few of them. And so it's basically it's basically a logo challenge where you gotta make it huh. using this thing. And I came up, I came up with that right there. So well, you didn't AI that, right? I I AI that. That's Holy the, and AI made that, bro. Okay. Yeah. So you've been looking into this shit too. It's not just me. No, dude, it's not just you. Um, this, it's taking the world by storm, and it's honestly really like interesting to figure it out, especially because we're at the cusp of good. this, and this, this is like um the future. So like, if I wanted job security and like wanted to get into a booming new industry when I get out of uh, college in like three years, um, three or four years, uh, I one. would join the AI team. I would, I would, I would study AI and I would, I would figure, I would figure out how to do or how to code this stuff and be on the back end of that because this is a raging, um, industry right now is the, is open AI is one of the, probably fastest growing AI like services ever, I would say. And it's, it's, it's all the buzz around the media. You've heard of it before. You've heard of Dolly 2. You've heard of chat GPT, which we could talk about. Um, but they are at the cusp of AI knowledge. It's taking over. Holy. And, um, <laughs> and the thing is, is it's, it's all in our control. So it's not really taking over. Like yeah. you can't say, um, Hitler shaking hands with Donald Trump on Dolly 2. It's Wait, but, do but, it. but, that's just because the companies are limiting it. When someone gets their hands on this, if somebody gets the open source code, and you you can, know that's going to happen, they can pull all stops, and it, and it might happen. And like that's that's when it gets like like if it gets so it's real going that to happen like, eventually. I can almost guarantee that because you're going to have to be in person with somebody face to face to know if they're actually real. Like like me and X Man are in this room right now, and are, but I can, are we? I can know he's actually <laughs> real, but are we really real? But you just got to think, bro. Is you, this actually real? Is this not a deep fake? Have you heard? Yeah. The, the, Deep fakes been going crazy. Have you heard about that Twitch drama? People are going crazy over nah, that. Nah, what are you talking about? Oh my, we'll get that in a minute. We're talking about Twitch news right now. I know we might just have to just because oh, it kind of no. it, it kind of ties in almost. Okay. But man, I've been seeing these things on Twitter where they're imitating voices. Um, I saw them about some Kanye, some Donald Trump ones, and they're not the ones that you usually. There's a Joe Rogan one too. Yeah, it's not the ones that you usually hear where it's like, oh, oh, I'm Joe Rogan, huh? and it's you could tell it's robotic. These ones are like serious. Like, is it the alert? The alert message? Like, <sighs> you can you can choose like. I don't. I, I have no idea design. how it's made. Because I know made. Poke Laws had that for a while. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how it's made. Uh, it's not. It's definitely higher quality than the TTS. I'll have to send find one and send it to you some other time. But like, it's it's basically like. And then I'm thinking like, bro, people like. I feel like this is gonna get some motherfuckers in trouble somehow. Someone's gonna try and frame someone or do something crazy with it. Whether I, I just don't know how someone's gonna tell whether or not like the law enforcement. Like if someone does something crazy with it, how are they gonna tell if it's real or not? If it gets even more advanced than it is now. It's it's We're a crossroads. Screwed. We're at a crossroads. We're screwed. Bomb. Bring, bringing it back to the AI uh, art, though, I think the reason why it's almost scary for artists, um, what they're realizing now, is that I had this conversation with my brother about music. Really, like uh, he's talking about my music, and I hope no one does this, but it's like when you write your lyrics. Like a lot of times, I rap on other people's beats, but what's stopping someone from stealing my lyrics? But I'm like, if you think about it, art—that's copyright law. Exactly. So it's basically as soon as I write a lyric. 
it's basically auto copywriting because it's mine. I created it. It's probably the same. Is it the same with AI art though, or is it be, you know if it's being u- made through another company? I'm pretty company? sure all um, AI art, even if you generated it, is going to be open source. Because so yeah. here's another thing that we were talking about at the club last week, is that we were talking about the ethics of Dolly Two, which is that image generating software, and um, how artists were saying that because the AI was trained on their art that was free online. Um, they are entitled to a cut and there's actually a lawsuit, um, that's definitely not going to go through because, well, and here's why, um, or here was the main like counter counter, like, um, example to this was that, uh, say you're an artist and you want to paint like Van Gogh, you study Van Gogh art. Okay. Um, and you train yourself to paint exactly like Van Gogh, but make it new, okay? You're not entitled Van Gogh a cut of your art, right? <laughs> so that's kind of the ethics that we were talking about there is that, like, just because you were trained on all the, these people's art doesn't mean that they require money for you to well, use here's, it. Here's the thing, though. That's I just think, how learning works. I think the loophole with that is that it's not the creative aspect that they're trying to take a cut from. It's the fact that you used their software to make it. That I think that's what the argument is. And I think, which, that's what I'm saying. I haven't looked into it enough, but I bet yeah. you there's something in, the, like, the terms of service to where they have a little bit of, like, an advantage. But then again, you... you yeah, also, I'm not a lawyer, so... Yeah, exactly. Neither am I. So you make a good point, though. That probably won't go through, but you never know. I feel like someone's going to find a loophole somehow, and it it could go either which way, honestly. We don't really know. But, um... Exactly. Yeah, just... <laughs> I don't even know. Like it's it's so confusing. I don't know how they get it done. But like what you said, when they have um, what you call it, open source, when someone like gets access to it or makes their like what they make their own AI company with no restrictions, then uh, that's I mean, that's why they gotta make some laws against it. I think otherwise, you know, shit's gonna get out of hand and go crazy. But should I talk about that Twitch drama? Or you? Want? Yeah. Yeah, that is wild. Um, I don't I even not heard about this. I haven't been watching Twitch like that, and I I still heard about this. Basically, there was this Twitch streamer, and you might know him. I don't know what his name is, so you'd have to look it up. But um, he basically get this. He opened a tab right on his like tabbed out of a game for a, I can kid you not like a split second. Someone paused the frame, saw a browser, Uh-oh. and this guy was like, he paid for deep fake. You know, of other streamers. No way. He paid for it. They figured out that he didn't just view. He wasn't just viewing them online. Click the shady link. He was paying for it. And uh, yeah, so they screenshotted Dude, that. How can motherfuckers be so dumb? So there was like deep fakes of uh, Pokemon and Cutie Cinderella. And Cutie Cinderella went on stream. She was all crying, talking about how she's gonna sue them. She was like flipping out. Um, so oh, everyone, yeah, it's fucking disgusting. Everyone's outraged. with the kicker is, oh my god, he gets on stream like only a day or two after. I think I'm pretty. He sure. returned. Yeah, and then he apologizes. He's all crying and stuff. He's apologizing with his wife, right, oh, right no. next to him, and he, she's just right. Like, say I'm sitting right here. He, yeah. She's like right here, just sitting behind him, just crying. I'm like, that dude. That is a disaster. Oh my god. Yo, if y'all fans of the Panda Man channel, bro. Oh my lord. That's why we be streaming on YouTube these days, bro. Most just can't be like normal, bro. I swear to God. This is the same thing I told you, like, uh, what, last pod? You know, don't idolize these streamers. I don't know which pod it was. Don't idolize these streamers. Yeah, it's probably been every single one. Yeah, they're just weird, man. A lot of these people are the weirdos behind the scenes. Um, It's cool to like what they do, like yeah. the content, but, yeah. Do not idolize them, because hey, these these people be doing some weird stuff. But, yeah, that was a whole drama, and it, that kind of ties in with the whole AI stuff, bro. They're doing that weird and that's stuff. That's real. That's real, dude. That's oh scary. Lord, what does our world come to? And I think streamers <laughs> are like the biggest like um, victims for that because their face is out there more than literally anybody else's. Oh, you yeah. know? They have thousands, uh, upon thousands, probably ten thousands of hours of their face um, to yeah. train on. So it's realistic. Because you, you see, like uh, people try to like do face swaps and stuff. You compare it now compared to it was like what five years ago. Yeah. All that deep fake stuff with the AI. So, dude, it is like, bro, it's just gonna keep getting better. That's the scary part. <laughs> like, that is wild. But uh, yeah, 
I feel like there's going to be some big time laws about it sometime in the, in the coming years. Yeah, but here's the thing though: they they still haven't figured out how to tax crypto, so I don't know how long it's going to take them to oh, wow. get to this like AI stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're going to get into the crypto talk now. <laughs> Dude, no. Oh, yeah. I My stocks it. are up, though. I'm up 30 bucks. Oh, what well, do you got stocks in? I got stocks in to dox my um, portfolio. I have stocks in Amazon. Um, mm, nice. And the S&P 500, uh, NVIDIA, Ford, Texas Pacific Land Oil. Uh, not much. Not much in that one. Or Ford. I have money in Rivian, which I've basically lost all of it. <laughs> Cause I don't know why, uh, I have like fifteen bucks in Tesla. I have, uh, shit. Is it, it's the same thing. Like, I I know I keep talking about the damn music, but it's like you got to try it, see if it works, and then you kind of learn for it. It's the same thing with YouTube. Training. So you got to try the YouTube video, put it out there, and see if it works. You got to try the stock and see what you know. Learn from your mistakes. It's true. Yeah, and uh, I I have um I'm I've told you this already, but I got a. One of my scholarships I got for uh, college for after high school was stocks in Starbucks. And it seemed to be going up. Really? I think it was at like uh, $70 when I first got it. It's yeah. like uh, one stock is like one 100 right now, 110 Ooh, okay. So it went up. Thank All you, right. Starbucks. I don't even go to Starbucks like that. What if you just went in and you're like, yeah, can I uh, <laughs> redeem this? <laughs> that is funny. It's share in the company. It's like, um, Bro. all right. I Here's a gift card, I guess. <laughs> I saw this one guy on Instagram. He used to do these videos. I don't know what his name is. I'm not a good person remembering names. He used to do this thing where, like, he would meme the, like, stock people. This was, like, prime, like, COVID. Everyone was talking about, oh, stocks. Oh, yeah, buy the that dip, Wall buy Street, the dip. Wall Street bet. Yeah, and he would, like, uh, he'd make these, like, memes. You know, people talk to themselves, do the skits. And then he'd be, like, he'd walk into a Starbucks. It's, like, um, oh, when you own 1% of Starbucks, he's, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually own a part of the the business. Can I can I get a free coffee? Shit like that is so funny. No, it's like no, a, you can't. People invest like a hundred dollars stocks and they think they have a like they actually like are owners of the companies. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, I got three hundred dollars in the United States of America. I'm basically <laughs> the president. Yeah, easy money, business moves. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Yeah, I haven't. Other than that, that scholarship stock I got, I haven't gotten. Uh, I haven't looked into. It's not a very stocks. good idea if you're not making like steady income. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't invest my money anymore because I don't have steady. I felt like, I, I, I thought about putting maybe just like a hundred dollars in because like, with well, expendable money. Oh yeah. no, oh, I just thought about what I did the other day. Uh, you might think it's cringe. I was bored though, but I was playing. I downloaded CS:GO. Um, in 2023, it's fun. Um, yeah. cause I was watching people play Valorant, and then I was watching people play CS:GO, and I was like, you know what? I haven't played the game for a while. I used to play this all the time. Um, so I got back on it, uh, just to play and I saw all the cases and I said, no, you know what? I'm no. bored right now. My, no. And I said, what could 10 bucks do? No. What, think about it though. What could 10 bucks do wrong? So I bought what what, could 10 bucks do wrong. I got like three cases and, uh, I got a pretty much bullshit, but one skin, I got a Galil skin that is actually factory new, which is the highest. And it's worth seven bucks. I mean, I didn't make a profit. So you lost three dollars. Pretty much, yeah. Did you sell it? Uh, I can't sell it yet. I have to wait like a Steam authenticator stuff. But I can sell it later on, yeah. And I was like, uh, is anybody gonna buy it? Yeah, people buy it. You you would think like it's like when you sell the Steam trading cards. You think no one's buy it? People buy that stuff instantly, which is surprising. I don't know why, but I know they can complete like collections and stuff. But I don't think anyone like really cares about that, right? I mean, uh. No normal person, but some people don't leave their house. Well, yeah, I feel like if you have expendable money, I feel like that's a fun thing to do, probably. Oh, yeah, just spend money for fun? Well, yeah. For digital nothing? We, we have mo Okay, I know you've spent money on games like Apex and Fortnite. It's the same thing. For the Battle Pass, that's actually gains, though. Well, you gotta think. Think about someone who plays CSGO. Getting a, a Steam trading card collection? Well, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying with people with expendable money. I'm not talking about, oh, me and you have like 50 bucks... For uh, side cash that we just want. I'm talking about people with a lot of money that are just like bored. Someone works a, a makes uh, thirty forty dollars an hour and they're just chilling at home. They're like, you know what? Why not? You know, I'm bored. Let me buy some nothing. Exactly. Um, which I feel like I don't know. CS:GO. Um, I feel like CS:GO and Fortnite. Like, I feel like they kind of do the skin stuff, right? But I don't know. That's a whole. That's a whole different thing. Um, it's better than buying an NFT though. 
I mean, it basically is an NFT, but at least you can do something with it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's all crashed and burned. Oh, yeah. So They're trying to save it, but it, it's... A, it, the world's a better place ever since Bitcoin crashed. It's so. all ogre now. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I don't know. Ron, maybe we should just buy the dip. I should buy by the dip it's just gonna go up guys think about it if it's already low it's only gonna go the up the rest right? of my savings I buy the dip. hey man it's going to the moon right yeah holy dude. shit it is a disaster have you heard, you heard about that um made me think the most recent like uh tragedy of um nfts the whole logan paul thing that went pretty huge uh crypto zoo crypto zoo. oh yeah that is man. do you know prime is the official drink of the mma now Oh yeah, UFC. I just I heard of that. Oh, right? UFC. Not MMA, but I'm yeah. such an idiot, dude. I swear to God, I don't know anything. Well, I just UFC, say words. UFC is MMA. It's the same thing. Bro. Okay. It's yeah. just the the organization that hosts it. But like, I'm just. It's just crazy how Dana White can stand behind J- uh, like Logan Paul and like sign this huge deal for his drink company to like be the official sponsor yeah. or something, just after he had this huge thing go on with CryptoZoo. Yeah, but you're talking about that. But are, everyone just forgot that uh, Dan, Dana White just slapped the shit out of his wife. Remember Did that? he? Remember, I told you about that, remember? Like a week or two ago? And they're, still, like, whole, and they're all, still good. So they're both having their own controversies. And they're just like, yeah, let's do a partnership. Some people are immune, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. What is Dude, going that's on? what I'm telling you. We, we've talked about this before. It's like if you ignore the, the cancellation attempts and you just keep doing your own thing, dude, you can't be canceled. Swear to God, bro, it's like the twelve-year-old fan base doesn't want to let go of their childhood. But I feel like, dude, uh, uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Dana White, uh, I don't know if he's the main owner, but he's at least one of the owners. Runs the UFC, and um, he basically there was a nightclub footage where he just straight up slapped the holy shit out of his wife, and uh, people got on his ass for like a week, and I guess everyone forgot. So, yeah, <laughs> what a world. Wrote the clip. Just oh, playing. Yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't roll the clock. Nah, no nah. way. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of... But then not only is that a controversy, right? There's another one with... Have you heard about that slap fighting stuff? Yeah. That is the worst shit ever. It is so bad. Have the you, the, s- the slap boxing? Yeah, you realize... Do you know why it's so bad though? What do, what do you mean? What do you mean bad? Like... So you have people slap... Have you seen... Like you've seen their faces, people getting uh, knocked out and stuff? yeah. yeah. The whole point of boxing and MMA, UFC, all that is, um, prote- they even tell you when you box, protect yourself at all times. You're putting two people to hit each other as hard as they can where they they literally cannot protect themselves. Yeah. Of course, people are going to get brain damaged. and. No, dude, that's concussion. That's like getting hit in the face with a car, um, like like at, like at a car yeah. speed right into your face. And, and the whiplash gives you concussion. Yeah. And... Dude, slap boxing is wild, and it's totally a Russian thing to do. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but the whole reason there's controversy, uh, whatever the fuck around it, is because um, UFC, um, Dana White, they all made like their own league now. So it's like it's not a just a Russian thing no more. Like it's an American thing. They show it on TV. Wow. It's it's pretty recent. So have you heard of um? It's really bad. Car jujitsu. Um. The only thing I can think of when you say that is I saw real life Rocket League and real cars recently. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I think of. X Men sent me a video and it was like Rocket League and Rocket League is getting too damn real, man. Oh, I sent you that. And yeah. like it was, it was like in the middle of the road and like they had like Rocket oh, yeah. League plugged in on a TV and then like a soccer ball comes from the left and then a car just runs the TV over. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, but um, there was yeah, an a- there was an actual video that not that one that was pretty fucking funny. Yeah, though. there was another one though where people um <clears throat> people were actually trying to do Rocket League real life. They were actually doing it. Yeah, and like That's a crazy. cage. It was weird. But yeah, dude, car jujitsu was be- like it- I saw a video on my Instagram, and it was um these people they start with their seatbelt on, so like when the timer goes off, seatbelt goes off, and like immediately the guy that was watching like blocked the other guy's hand from getting to the seatbelt to like undo it while he undid his with his other hand, and then he just like hopped on top of him and choked him out with the seatbelt, and it was like what is going on? Is this dude? Rocket League in real life or but MMA? Uh, MMA or in a car. Him? Mad Max in this bitch. I'm yeah, like, because <laughs> oh yeah, dude, you, I don't know what's going on with these alt martial arts, but like you said, it was like some car jitsu or something stuff like car that. Car jitsu, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I was thinking rock league so, but yeah, what the what the hell? Who makes stuff? I I think what it is is like people are just getting bored. That and people want to make money and they want to be 
uh, at the start and the head of an industry. So people are trying to make their own industries. That's why. That's all it is, really. It's yeah. a whole slap boxing thing. They're like, oh, slap boxing. That's a great idea. Let's make. Let's make sure we are the start of it. But um, it's a disaster. It's just these people trying to hit the the first, the next gold rush. You know what I mean? Pretty much. But it's like it's like ten times a year we're gonna have another gold rush. It's like, I don't know. I don't know when enough money's enough money for these people. But it's all right. Uh, who knows, bro? Yeah, but the whole outrage of the bo- the slap boxing stuff. It, it is so dumb because people are eating that up and like, oh wow, this is so amusing. And meanwhile, um, I saw. And I can't speak for every slap boxing event, but I saw this one where this guy was getting messed up and then someone like quote tweeted it and was like, how much money they make? And the guy said, 2K, 2K in, 2K out. And I'm like, what? And the guy was like, what does that mean? They get 2K to play and 2K if they win. $2,000 to get like severe brain damage. That won't even cover your goddamn hospital bill, man. And that's through a bracket. That's not one match, right? That's through a whole tournament bracket. So they're not even making anything. You know these programs are probably making a bunch of money off them just for fun just, yeah so they're literally going in to hurt themselves for pretty much jack shit money and although that was probably only one event i mean i can't imagine the other ones are any better really so that is wild they're making nothing just to get uh destroyed so uh yeah no it's silly like a lot a lot of this new stuff is like it's i mean i'm not really into martial arts that much you know like mind. honestly um, MMA would be cool or like the UFC would be cool if like it wasn't pay-per-view and I could just watch it true um, but <coughs> my pirate it <coughs> yeah <coughs> uh, alternate website <coughs> anyway exactly um, have you seen Creative Clash 2 uh, oh the yeah trailer for that uh, 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 it looks good it looks good um, Idub's fight kind of looks weird though why that fool um, was it Wasabi uh, oh my yeah you see what I, I said Dude, that Wasabi Discord? guy's weird bro so you I say another Wasabi L? Uh, yeah. No, I was uh, yeah. Uh, I said a new low for Alex Pusabi. <laughs> um, that was the thing started by a KS- KSI because he was supposed to fight KSI like a couple months ago. Wasabi? Yeah, dude. I I remember you, I I used to watch the videos when I was little, and I always thought they were so silly because like it was like all this catered like everything's like rainbows and sunshine and like yeah. Jello and like all this shit. Yeah. And, like you know what I mean? And I feel like they were like I I just don't picture alex wasabi going in on anybody i mean he could low-key box but basically he was supposed to fight ksi and then he pulled out so everyone started calling him alex pusabi because he literally pussied out oh my god like ksi went in he was bulking up and then bro got ripped like he's in crazy shape KSI? Like, yeah like so he got scared basically and but they're like oh but he got injured he had a concussion I was like oh shut up like let's be real here and uh KSI's most recent, he had another opponent not too long ago, Dylan Dan is sort of like a MMA guy. No one really knows him. He's just a guy who talks on the internet. And he pulled out too. He didn't even have an injury. He pulled out too. So people will talk about that. Like, I'd be watching these uh, YouTube. KSI's just the goat. At, like, he kind of is. Like that. Like Jake Paul. I don't like Jake him. Paul, but Jake Paul is crazy, man. He He's like, people make fun of these oh, YouTube boxers, but these motherfuckers can really box, bro. They're, they're into him, bro. And, um, dude, the one fight from creative clash i'm most excited about is actually um fits versus i did a thing i know fits is i don't know who the other guy is he's he's another australian he's a big guy he fought um fuck dude who did he fight for the first one uh, i didn't really i watched the first one. i mean i watched like idub's fight i can't really remember the rest of it though but yeah they have a lot of fights that's a lot he fought he fought um he fought odd ones out i did a thing did he fought odd ones out yeah in the last Creator Clash. Yeah, see, I don't know who any of those people are. That's why He's I was an animator too. I was watching the Creator Clash 2 thing. I don't know who half those people are, if I'm being real. Yeah. But, I mean, who, who knows? could be pretty fire. That's a lot of people. Well, to- you don't know I did a thing, and he's one of the the funniest um, creators on my YouTube page. So you should probably go, like, binge watch his channel. He basically does, like, he creates inventions that are, like, completely out there. And he's, like, Australian, so he's, like, on another level of psych- psychopathy. And, um, psychopathy. Yeah. And uh, so Five head shit right there Basically he's He's insane And he's making insane contraptions That could easily kill him um, In his garage And uh, so <laughs> I, I just love his channel Because he just does these goofy inventions But um, He's gonna fight Fitz And they're both like Ginormous Oceanians Oh and lord They're They're just gonna face off dude 
and it's gonna be cool. And the one thing about Fitz is like that fool hasn't made content in, like three years. Yeah. And no, um, a big return. Yeah, we're we're just gonna see him like we haven't seen him in like half a year on like any social media or anything, and we're gonna finally see him just like ripped out of his mind boxing. I did a thing, and just for like some reference. I did a thing, literally killed Odd Ones Out. Like, and it was Odd Ones Out's birthday on the on the fight in the Creative Clash Damn. 1. So it's going to be a good one, I think. Because I don't think – I think Fitz is going to mm. pull out all the stops, and I think I did a thing is also going to go crazy because it's kind of like – it's it's the Kiwis versus the Aussies. So, like, <laughs> it's going to be cool. Did you see uh, the chess boxing event? That was pretty good. Uh, I didn't really watch that, actually. It was not that bad. I, I missed it, I think. I didn't watch I it working. live. I didn't watch it live, but I, I like uh, I watched all the things. That's a pretty cool concept. I thought well, I heard first heard the announcement. All I saw was like the title, and I was like, I didn't even know how they were gonna do it. And I was what was like, the main fight on that? Uh, I have no idea. I remember seeing Myth fighting. Uh, I can't really remember the rest of the fights. There were some big names though. I think even I think I don't know. No, Ludwig was a commentator, but it was like his event. I'm pretty sure. The funniest thing about that event to me was. Um, some of them didn't do any boxing training because yeah. they were so good at chess, and then they just got knocked out. Yeah, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about it's called chess boxing. It was a thing uh, I think mainly like put on ago. by Ludwig, who's a, a streamer, a YouTube streamer now. And it's basically they would go play chess in the middle of the boxing ring for like a certain amount of time. I'm not sure how the rules worked. I don't really remember. And then they would take the chess board out or whatever, and then boom, they would box. And then they would box for like a round and go back to chess and for an, another round about a round of chess. So and then they would, you know, I guess if you beat them in one or the other, you win, which is pretty like when we talk about oh slap boxing, this lame ass sports people trying to make that idea like that's a great idea. Chess boxing like that was pretty unique. I'm not gonna lie, I did not expect much. It was of a, it. it was a cool watch. It was uh, it was fun to watch. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it, was it was pretty awesome. And uh, I wish I watched more of it. I think Andrea Botez. Uh, oh yeah, I've seen that, too. Yeah. And Andrea Botez is an animal in in chess, and I think she went crazy on the boxing too. Yeah, which which was cool to see. And um, I think that if if something was as successful, they're definitely going to do it again. It's kind of like the creator clash in that way. Um, but dude, yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was very unique, and it, and it worked a lot. I think that's like influencer boxing going right. I feel like there's two parts of influencer boxing they call it crossover boxing there's like the really serious side and then there's like the entertainment i think yeah and uh they're both pretty good like jake paul like he puts on like real like boxing events um which is crazy to think about because jake paul i mean he came up as such a fucking cornball man yeah um but bro fought like um, uh some crazy fighters man like no no pushovers so it's crazy. I mean, a lot of people have that dog in them. They just don't know it until you really get into it. It's crazy, man. Who do you think your matchup was, would be if you had to like do a creative clash? Um, well, I'm I'm a, like I'm gonna be real. I'm, I'm a pretty lightweight guy, bro. Yeah. So like I'd definitely be because it's all about weight classes. So I'd you be, think you go up against Idubs? Uh, I think I could, yeah. But I think you guys he, probably match up. He might be a, he might be above my weight class because I got to think about my got to think all your. Your um, your weight now is different than you know your fighting weight. My fighting weight, I'd probably put on more weight. Yeah, so I'd yeah, probably be some muscle. I think because I'm probably 155 to 160 right now. So I'd probably be in the 170 to 175 range, maybe maybe even lower. Right, but which that's that's like most of the YouTubers though. So like I think KSI fights like 175 and he is ripped, man. Yeah, it's a good middle weight because um you can gain and you can lose. You know yeah. what I mean? But maybe. But then I'm I'm, I'm not a fighter, so. Yeah, I don't know what my so, real fighting weight would look so like. So, would you lean into the chess if you were in chess boxing? Uh, no, I would no, lean into the boxing. You lean into the boxing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking, I'm a natural athlete, bro. Like, I got into sports pretty late, but when I did, like, I just kind of got into it. Like, like uh, I'm trying to think, like basketball, been baseball, volleyball, championship, multiple championship games. Um, I don't, I'm not a pressure guy. That's also one thing why I like rapping. I get on a stage, I'm getting speeches and stuff. Like I don't, I don't feel pressure. So I feel like on a stage like that, like you, know, like man, whoo, boxing. I've always wanted to box too. That's the thing, but it's kind of a hard thing to get into. You can't just. I mean, it's like everything else. You can't. Just, boxing VR. Oh wow! Wow, boxing VR. Okay, but but it's not like it's not yeah. real boxing at all. It's it's like a workout though. Hey, we like, bo- it's, oh, it's drenched in sweat. I've done we boxing. That's just fun though. We boxing. Oh yeah, I'd I'd like to knock out some mees. <laughs> exactly, it was that the the final guy to like the boss and all those names like Matt Matt the black guy. It's Matt, yeah. yep. 
The bald guy. Yeah, bald guy. That's legendary. Yeah, I, I love throwing hands at Matt, dude. That guy, shit face. Great. Yeah, I I used to train boxing at my. I haven't done it recently, but I had like a reflex bag and stuff. I used to train him like because uh, it's always good to know how to fight. You want to know how to defend yourself, which I, I don't. Um, really? Yeah. You've never been in a fight before? No. Wow, really? Yeah. I talk I mean, myself out of a lot of shit. I do too, to be fair. Um, I don't. I'm not a guy to throw hands just because. Um, I have before a few times, and I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, other than that one, you know, YouTube one we always talk about, uh, it's always been over basketball. Um, I usually, that's always a last resort, Fuck though. Fuck ball. Yeah, dude, because when you're playing street ball, um, especially if you're in certain places, like, people are pretty ruthless. But, um, yeah, I usually, I try to avoid a fight about all costs, but sometimes it just happens and you don't really have a choice. But, Yeah. I know. I just try not to surround myself around those people. You know what I mean? Oh, because definitely. Like, um, I've I've never been very combative, and um, and it, it kind of pisses me off sometimes that I'm not combative because, like, you know, I'll just be getting stepped on, and like, I won't do anything about it. But you know, so yeah. in that in that sense, I don't really like. I don't really fight for like shit when I when I know I'm right and somebody else is wrong. I just kind of yeah. like okay, I'm not gonna change your mind, so well, uh, we're just gonna shut. Let up. me give you an example. For me, I put it this way: like if you say if you were shit talking my music, like if you were just saying every pointing out every bad thing about it, going yeah. crazy, I won't give a fuck. Music's subjective, and at the end of the day, whether someone shits on my music or not, I know that it's my music and it's good and whatever. But when it comes to basketball. I'm not gonna lie. When when we talk basketball, that's a whole other. For me, I have such a huge. I'm just gonna be straight up. I have a huge ego when it comes to basketball. Everyone who knows me probably knows that. When we start talking basketball, we start playing. I have like. Well, that's good to have pride in what like you are really like interested yeah. in. You know what I mean? Like like things like streaming and stuff. Like yeah, I get pretty offended when Charlene's like, dude, like. <laughs> this podcast looks like shit like you said the quality was gonna be good yeah and, to be uh, fair he was right though no he was right and i <laughs> it didn't piss me yeah, off yeah we time. apologize for that by the way the yeah. camera was out of focus last yeah podcast. yeah last podcast it was still watchable. Was out of focus um i think i think this time is a lot better i turned up the bit rate i um made sure everything was focused we don't have like a freaking cup right here that's stealing the focus yeah. or whatever um yeah so i think we fixed it in that regard but it, it was scuffed but yeah I have a goddamn major ego in basketball. So every time, like, when I get challenged in the sport, I go crazy. I'm, I talk a lot of shit. I'm, but I think there's a way to, like, um, squash any beef, like, oh, yeah. gentlemanly with, like, a 1v1. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That, that's, what the, that's the great thing about basketball. You can't yeah. do that. That's why I always loved basketball more. You can't do that in baseball or football. I mean, you can. there's ways you can, but it's just not the same as basketball. Nope. No, you you really can't, though. Like, like, like in I'm football, saying, you like, can you can run practice. You can run routes on each other or, like, block each other, but that's yeah. not the same as basketball. There's a clear winner. Yeah, because, like, I mean, I was a lineman in football um, during high school, and if we wanted to, like, see who was better, like, like – in football, generally, they're all our brothers, and we re- wouldn't really talk shit, especially on like as a lineman. We were all we were all pretty much friends. But if we wanted to figure out who was stronger, you go one on one. So basically, you have one guy lined up, um, and there's there's a line of bags that give you one lane to run through um, to hit each other. So basically, you get down in a three point stance, each of you staring at each other. Um, coach says hike. You guys, you guys collide. Damn. And whoever pushes the other the farthest, whoever falls down the first. Um, That's some real Giga Chad shit right now. <laughs> yeah, loses, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, basketball, I was always quiet. Uh, like, I play quiet. Like, I play hard, but it's like, I don't say nothing until... Um, you ain't be talking shit, bro, because, like, you, you got nothing to say. I, mean, I, don't, I don't say nothing until I get a reason to. You stay humble. It's cool. And then, but as, as soon as I get that one reason to, oh, it's over from there. Like, I'm talking shit the whole game. Oh, dude. Yeah, th- that's probably that's probably why, like, so, maybe people so get, like, a little bit heated. I'll, I'll play quiet. I mean? I'll be quiet the whole game, play the whole time. I, you, you put, you give me a cheap foul. Oh, yeah, I'm talking the rest of the game. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's fair, though. That's yeah. That's definitely fair. But, like, man... I wish, man, I'm going to get some of this footage soon. I gave the, this girl um, uh, footage. She works at my school. She helped me out with everything. Uh, I'm going to get all the basketball footage I had uh, soon, which is going to be fucking sick because I meant all my buckets on there and everything. Oh, I can't wait. But um, when it came to practices, though, like the thing you said about, oh, yeah, those are your brothers, you know? Yeah. It was the same thing. Like, bro, like I would always make sure my teammates knew because in the moment you can't tell when you're shit talking to your teammates, like you can't tell, but it's all like, I do this because this is the intensity in a game and I do this so we can all get better. But I'm also telling you like, yeah, there's levels to this shit. You got to know the levels. Yeah. 
And uh, because, like, especially, dude, when I was, I played at Sequoia, which is like a goddamn, you know, it, it's a continuation school. It's so a rough there's, school. Yeah, so there's motherfuckers talking shit all the time. So you kind of have to be ready for it. But I'd make sure I told them before and after we always played. I was like, bro, at the end of the day, it was, you leave it on the court, you know? It's, um... Just because I'm shit talking to you, I'm telling you, uh, you know, like, oh, you bitch, you can't, you can't guard me. Doesn't mean I hate you. Yeah. You should my home. like, bro. We, we, and the thing is, a lot of people don't know how to take that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, they'll they'll resort to like, dude, what the fuck you want to do, man? What yeah. are you trying to do? And right? you know what happened to those teammates? Huh. Um, they all <laughs> they either left the team or got kicked off because you know my team was sort of like I told you this before. Combative. It was like twenty people, and then by the end of the season, by championship game, we only had what. Eight nine people left, so get enough to fill the field, and that's about it. Pretty much, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever been benched once. Um, maybe unless we were blowing them out, because like we had so many people, and then the people were getting dropped left and right. It was it was it was a wild time. Yeah, my varsity football year, I didn't get benched unless we were winning. Yeah, pretty much same here. Um, by a lot though. But yeah, overall, you know, end of the day, I could still um, talk shit uh, to my teammates so much, and then chop it up right after practice. Like nothing happened, we're still cool. You just gotta, have, you just gotta no limits, you know. There's always line. Yeah. Certain lines you don't cross. Like I would never like, um, goddamn, I you know don't watch basketball like that. <laughs> There's this crazy video of Draymond Green punched his teammate uh, Jordan Poole on the Warriors in practice, like laid him out. I definitely up. saw that. You saw it? Yeah. Uh, that was pretty hilarious. People were memeing on it. And they just won the championship during the – and then, like, a couple practices what? later, well, he lays out his own teammate, which is kind of hilarious. But it's also like, why would he do that, dude? So dumb. Yeah, I would, that's the one line you don't cross. Like, you can you can play rough, play physical. And you don't, I never punch a teammate. Yeah, you don't cheap shot your teammate. I would never try to hurt a teammate that's, like, that's stupid. Yeah, which was really annoying um, in football, too. It was like, it's really easy to get hurt in football. Oh, definitely, yeah. And during practice, you know, we were always very, like, stressed to go hard. And it's important to go hard in practice. And uh, it's understandable until somebody gets hurt. Um, the only time I've actually been hurt uh, is in practice uh, from football. And uh, in the games, I never got hurt. I never broke any bones. I broke I broke four bones playing football. They were all at practice. Oh, damn. I've never and, broken uh, a bone. Yeah, dude. I've broken my arm. I'm lucky, man. I've broken, broken my arm bones about five times. Jeez. But, uh, yeah, dude, it, it, it's tough. And um, you've been keeping fit? Have you been working out? Uh, I won't have, I'm, I'm not definitely, I'm not going hard like I am like I was my championship days. But I, I, I can get on a court right now and go crazy. Yeah. I can run for a while, you know. I'm in good shape, yeah. That's good. I'm not definitely not my prime shape, but I don't really need to be, you know. I'm not playing sports anymore. Yeah, dude, because I've been, I've been trying to lay into it recently, and it's really hard to, like, you know, work it into my schedule. Like, today I'm going to have to skip it, uh, which, you know, it's it's whatever, but it sucks. And what, um, this is, I've been going hard. In the this thing. is kind of a weird way to look at it. People might think it's weird, but I look at it. I like to be in good enough shape. If I need to whoop someone's ass, I can. Yeah. If I need to run from somebody, I can without getting tired. So That's the um, way I look at it, which is weird, but, I mean... Another thing that ties into the fact that like I've never been in a fight is I'm I'm large I'm a large yeah. man uh, I'm stocky, you know. Pen man versus X man boxing match coming soon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I think I'd have a lot more yeah, weight got, behind that you punch got a lot than more. you do just because of there's the, a reason there's yeah, weight classes. Exactly. Uh, even though I've never thrown a punch at somebody, only in my dreams. I think I've said that <laughs> here before. I, I've thrown the slow punch in the dreams. If you guys know what I'm talking about, any dreamers in here? You know, it's just a. <laughs> Bro thinks he's one punch man in his dream or something. Exactly. What does it say? Exactly. 100 sit ups, 100 squats, 10 kilometer running. Uh, one punch man cup. Every day? Yeah, dude. 100 push ups? It's condensating. Yeah. <laughs> it's condensating. But, um, dude, holy, yeah. I, I, that's a weird way to put it, but yeah, I like to be in shape. If anything ever happens for whatever reason, I'm gonna be out of breath. Oh, oh yeah, you stay ready. I like stay ready for any sort of physical. Yeah, because like if if anybody wants to, you know, like like go out and do some basketball, you know, you're not gonna be out of shape. Yeah, you'll be ready. You know, exactly. And like if anybody asks me or if I ask myself, like what I'm training for. I'm not training for anything. And it also it's also you know good I mean? for you. You like to feel good too. That's why I do it. Uh, it's it's like a that's the other half of the reason because like working out, dude. I mean, I'm sore right now, but like I feel like every time, every day that I'm sore is another day where I feel like I'm do- doing something like better myself. It's just, a good feeling after you're done. Yeah, it's really good. And yeah. um, I've actually started running. Uh, and I've never been a runner. I'm 227 pounds of pure mass. See, and uh, I'm a runner. 
I'm, I'm <laughs> six foot, and uh, you know, I it's it's hard for me to get moving. You know what I mean? And I've been and I yesterday I actually did two miles uh, over the span of 24 minutes, which is that's, pretty, that's not bad. It's it, I, it's the first time I've done the two mile on the treadmill because like usually I'll just like at the end of a workout I'll do like a seven minute 30 mile and like kill it real quick and then just like call it a day but I was like you know I kind of want to go for distance today so I hit the two miles and I was like all right because it's good because um I've been I've been struggling with like my weight gain has been crazy recently because I went from walking about a hundred thousand 120,000 or a hundred thousand to 120,000 steps in a week to 60,000 in a week so I so I cut my passive calorie burning and I I've, I've been more or less eating the same uh probably a little less but um with all the working out I hope that it's muscle and I, I think I've kind of like d- denounced in my head that like it's probably muscle but like um I'm you might see pan the man balloon back up to like fucking i don't know i I gotta stop eating though like sort of god i don't know it's like a mental switch that you gotta get to because like you know exerting yourself exerting exerting yourself at work um makes you hungry and then you get used to like having to eat all this to like you know keep yourself awake you know what i mean you're not fatigued all day you gotta like resort to food to like kind of like fill that gap but now that all I'm doing is like brain work and I feel like I'm doing so much and I eat like I'm working like a nine to five when all I'm doing is sitting in a desk and doing work all day is kind of like, I mean, it feels like I'm doing a lot and I don't know like what the science is around like, um, intense mental work, but like, I feel it's definitely, it's definitely not the same amount of calories as like if I was like walking all day. Um, but I don't know, dude, it's tough and like, you know, falling in a rut because like when you're hungry, you don't, your brain doesn't really want to work. You kind of, you lose focus and stuff like that. So like, definitely, yeah, I'm stuck, bro. My, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, we, I feel like we talk about physical stuff all the time because, you know, we're both, we're both athletes are, um, but I, man, for me, you're talking about, oh, sometimes when you run and sometimes it's hard to just like, you know, go out there and actually, you know, feel the need to run for me. So uh, the opposite, I can run I go play basketball for a lot, run a lot. Uh, and feel good about it and not have to like go out of my way to do it. It's kind of just natural. But when it comes to weightlifting, bro, when I weightlift, like, uh, I usually, I'm a reps guy. I usually go for reps, but maybe I, I feel like maybe I shouldn't go for reps just because when I weightlift. You want to start going heavy? You want to start powerlifting? Uh, not like, not going too crazy, but just enough. Well, of course, like, you know, just pushing your own personal the, level and goal. Yeah. The reason I want to do that is because when I go, I'm, I'm usually a reps guy, like I said. So when I go, I don't get tired. I can go for longer, but I literally, I'm there and I get bored and I'm just like, dude, I'm, this is like boring. Like that's literally the only thing. Really? I'll, I'll do it to get it done. But then I'm just like, Oh my God. It's just like, I literally, it bores me so bad. I'm just like, I almost don't want to work out. Cause wow. like when, when I'm playing basketball, like, Oh, I can do this forever. I can do this for hours. When I'm, when I'm weightlifting, I'm just like, Holy shit. I'm so bored. With, I'm, with weightlifting, especially going for heavy weights. Cause I don't, I guess, I guess I power lift. I don't body build. Yeah. Um. I just go for big numbers. So like, um, when you're putting that, okay. So this for people that work out it might not seem too crazy, but um. So yesterday uh, it was bench day, and I put up uh, I put up seventy pound dumbbells um, on the dumbbell bench, and uh, you know when you got seventy pounds yeah. on the dumbbells and you're putting it up, dude, there's some adrenaline there because you know it's scary. Like you, you get to a high weight, it gets it starts yeah, to get like that's dangerous. what I was thinking about going heavier, yeah, and going for shorter workouts instead uh-huh. of longer workouts with more reps. How long are your workouts? Um, we're at thirty minutes to an hour. Thirty minutes to an when hour. When I do weightlift, yeah, when I only weightlift, and lift, that's long for you. When you're when I'm doing just like it's just this the whole time, or yeah. whatever I'm doing, you know, and, and it's like it's usually pretty fast paced though, um, because I'm usually doing uh heavy enough weight to where it's challenged but not too heavy to where i can't go for like 20 30 reps if i want to really so depends. like with us like when i go with my it's also buddies, different I'm, I'm a whole different weight you know yeah but like when we do it we we go and it's like two hours we're there and um we're doing we start out with like some warm-up you know what i mean and then yeah. we then we hit the bench you know on a, on a chest day we hit the bench and then we do like I mean, max eight reps. 
on the on the stuff you know what i mean because that's kind of like i usually do 10 or 10 to 15 depends what i'm doing and that that's good for like muscle uh toning but but like if you want to actually that's kind of what i I feel like that's what i'm that's the main reason i do if i'm being honest yeah toning yeah yeah because like for me i I just want to build those muscles because i don't know i just like the idea of having big muscles i I don't know i don't really have like a way of like actually rationalizing why i work out i got really for my size i got really strong legs yeah there's natural um playing basketball and all that dude my legs are really strong um my my whole core is pretty strong so i think yeah i probably i think i'm gonna start like i don't know I feel like that's a long time for me. I don't know. It's just boring. <laughs> I just get bored. Maybe I'm just... But you go, you do it alone, huh? Yeah, I do it it's alone. It's tough doing and it alone, dude. And I'm just like, the best thing I can really do is just put on some music and then go at it. And uh, that's not always fun. Yeah, in between like your cool downs, just hopping your phone. Yeah, and it's usually even, what I do. It's, it's even fun. worse when you're on a day when you don't feel like doing it. Yeah, when you don't feel like doing it, it's tough, dude. And sometimes, you know, you got to let those demons get to you and like, you yeah. know, take a break every once demons. in a while. Because like, oh. you, you don't have to yeah. fucking lawnmower. Um, that's fine. Yeah, the gardeners are here, folks. I think it's different though because when I was um, like when I'm like when I was in my uh, senior year, I'm playing basketball. When I play basketball, or I have something like volleyball, baseball, whatever it is. I have a reason to go hard, and I'm like, okay, no, I can't take breaks. I have to because I don't want to lose. But yeah. now I'm out of school. I'm not playing sports no more. And now I'm like, okay, what's my reason now? And it goes back to the staying in shape, being ready for anything physical. But sometimes that's not always a great motivator when you don't feel like it, you know. That's the uh, that's the gem about you playing basketball is that basketball you could play until you die. You know what I mean? Pretty it's much, one, yeah. It's one of those sports where it pretty much never ends, especially if, like, even if it's not like competitive in the sense where you're on a team. You could you always go, go outside teams. and shoot some hoops. Yeah, you could always go out and shoot some hoops. But with football, you know, <laughs> it's not the same in the fact yeah. that like you you can't play football with just two people you know what i mean some well some could argue that you can but shut the it's hell up it's not the same shut the fuck up that's the re- that's the main reason i gave up uh, yeah. baseball because i stopped playing baseball after middle school and i just went all in with basketball and then of course volleyball my last year because i was like bro i have no friends that really play baseball like that in the first place and i can't really practice it alone like that's a hard thing to practice alone like, you can rarely do anything so basketball all i need is a hoop my ball and bro i can go crazy and in depth as i need to really dribbling shooting everything so personally baseball wasn't for me i started out playing baseball i played baseball for about six years and you played uh, like early though yeah i I played from when i was little to when i was like 10 and um i never got good i sucked and then i went i went a whole season without hitting a single ball oh wow constantly getting struck out so i um i quit after that i was like yeah we're not doing this anymore. And then I signed up for football and then started hitting motherfuckers. Um, which was also a struggle because, you know, um, when you join late into a sport. So, I, I mean, I've been oh, doing... yeah, I know that feeling. I've been doing um, football for a very long time. And I started and then stopped for a while. So, I started when I was about four or five years old. No, nah, probably like six. And that was, that was with the very young kids, the Bantam League. And uh, I I played until I was about like eight, and then I stopped, and then went went all in on baseball for a while, and then um, baseball was over, so I was like fuck it. And then when I was ten, I actually broke my arm, um, riding my bike down the street, and it it was pretty bad. I um I still have the scar actually eight years later, and um, I could see my bone and everything. Oh, and that she, she was like bleeding. That's my gnarly. Parents, my parents weren't home. My grandparents were home. My fucking friend's mom drove me to the hospital and shit. <laughs> and it, it was it was bad, dude. And um, I was in a cast for about three months. And I feel like that really it stunt it stunted my development pretty bad because uh, all these kids in middle school, because like, well, I guess I guess we're not to middle school yet. We'll get there, but um. So I, I think it put me behind, like, developmentally because, you know, my body, you know, at 10, like, you know, you're growing. And I feel like my body just stopped to, like, you know, fix myself. And then I just became really com- reclusive. Like, it w- that's when I was kind of in the days where I was just, like, Black Ops 2 every day, you know. <laughs> yeah. You get home from school, play Black Ops 2 until I have to go to sleep, you know what I mean? It was, like, back in those days. Um, just play zombies with your fucking cast on like a like like your cast is like up to your elbow and like you can't even get it past here but you can still twiddle your thumbs you know what I mean Jeez. so like that that's kind of like where I kind of um, collapsed into like I mean I was kind of a big kid 
Um, and, you know, I was kind of like awkward and shit. I, I'm still working through that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it it was it was a lot worse when I was, when I was younger. And um, basically, you know, I I got made fun of for like being fucking fat and shit and like fucking long hair. Like I, I think they call me a werewolf actually. Jesus, yeah, I think they call me a werewolf. And that's gotta be racist, right? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> racist. Uh, <laughs> Towards what race? I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just chatting shit. But um, yeah, so. I mean, and then I broke my arm again when I tried to get back into football. It was actually like the fourth day of Jesus, practice. Jesus, man. We didn't even have pads, and I fell backwards and broke my right arm, um, both arms, or both uh, both bones, my ulna and radius. And uh, that really set me back because that was like right before middle school. Oh, Lord. And coming into middle school, I was wearing like an arm brace, and I was scared to like do anything physical and like... Middle school is where, in in the U.S. at least, um, PE really like skyrockets, and it's like it's like the height of your physical education Pretty in school much, yeah. at least. And so like every, and like you're kind of in that stage where like if you're the fastest kid, you're the coolest kid. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? You know exactly what I, I mean. I kind of right? yeah. The fastest kid in elementary school was the coolest kid. Yeah, I kind of worked my way into one. I was always one of the fastest guys. I was not, and so yeah. I was I was low on the ladder. Anyway, um, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, when we got to the push-up test, all these the girls went first. All these girls were doing like thirty and shit, and I, and I was just there in my like uh, gym shorts and my highlighter shirt. Um, damn push-up tips, test, man, and, that's uh, stressful. And then I had to I had to go down to the sponge, and I'm like, I can't go down to the sponge and come back up. I did zero push-ups on the push-up test. Oh my like, god. Fuck. I can't even do a push up. Like they gave me like a pity one or two, even though I didn't really do it. Um, and then, you know, um Oh damn, bro, that's like a villain origin story right there. <laughs> well it's not villain origin story, it's Gaines origin story. That's why I really work I out because so. you know, you gotta see that kid in the fucking mirror every day. Exactly. And it's like, you know, one one time you couldn't do fucking one push up and now you could do, you know, thirty if you drop down right now. So, I mean, everybody's got their reasons for working out. It's just like for me, you know, it's it's proving myself yeah, that I can working, do shit. Working you know out is mean? never a bad thing. So it's, if you have the reason, it's perfect. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I was definitely a... Uh, you started early and you said, you know, got shaky and stuff. Where you had times where you didn't, you got hurt and stuff. Yeah. For me, I just didn't really do anything. I got to be the guy who played a lot of recess and stuff. Basketball, football, whatever it was. And I'd go all in and PE all the time. But yeah. I didn't start... My first sport was fifth grade, man. <laughs> My first sport ever on an actual team was fifth grade, and that's when I started playing baseball. Um, and it was always baseball all the way till eighth grade. And then eighth grade was also my first year I played. I also played basketball. And then ever since then, it's been basketball. And, yeah. I you just got to find what you like, man. Yeah. And um, then it'll all open up for you, you know what I mean? Dude, when you first start, bro, you don't know the things you're capable of. Yeah. Like, bro, when I was first started, it's the same thing. The music, everything you do in life when you first do YouTube, you're always so bad at it. But then you yourself, you kind of like, you do it a little bit and you're like, wait, I can really see myself doing like, no one else will see it until you, you actually do it. Like, I didn't think I'd be hitting step back threes, crazy, insane dribble moves and stuff. Like, bro, I was so ass. I could barely get the ball up to hit the rim when I was in fucking fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, so, I, I still people see, I still see people do those crazy moves with the basketball and I'm like, how the fuck? Yeah, well, dude, when I give you some of that footage... It's like uh, witchcraft. I'm going to get that footage. Basketball footage might be a while, but when I do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some. That shit is... Man, it's fun. It's fun. Sports overall, anything, it's amazing. You know that feeling you get when your your team win a game? It's like one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah. So, but yeah, bro, coming up and doing sports, it's a stressful thing, though. You, Dude, dude imagine the kids that don't do sports at all, like ever. I can't imagine Isn't that, that wrong? I feel like that's wrong. Like, you know... Like, your parents might have messed up if they didn't put you in I feel like slightly, kid. yes. And that's why I was pushing my mom recently to put my sister. She's, like, eight years old. I was like, get into sports now. Yeah, get, get her into soccer. My, like, um, my brother tried to do sports. He's, like, 20, I don't know, 20-something. He's in a higher, his in mid-20s around there. But uh, he tried to do baseball, too. But he started, like, eighth grade. He got into sports way too late. He just wasn't, he, he didn't have time to develop. You can pull it off, but it's tough. Because yeah, he just didn't have it like that. When, you know? when you start out, these kids like especially like this is assuming that you're in the same place and you, that you don't move and like yeah. you have like a youth league that that connects up to the middle school or the high school level um you're gonna be growing up with these kids and you guys are gonna potentially be on the same middle school team potentially be on the same high school team you're gonna know these kids your whole life so and 
and perhaps you know some of these coaches might be the coaches that are going to coach you yeah. through high school too so if you know them early and they know you you have such an edge because the thing about me was that when i took that break like between like um 10 to like 14 13 I didn't play any sports and then I came back for the last year of middle school football and I didn't play and I was, I was pretty good and I didn't play. I was, I was trying to play left guard. And, uh, so basically I was trying to prove it to my coaches all the time. Like when we did butt kickers one time <laughs> yeah. at warmups, um, one of my, one of my coaches like was like hearing like, what the fuck is that smacking sound? And it would, it, it was my my foot hitting my butt on butt kickers and he's like are you actually kicking your butt with the butt kickers right now <laughs> your high school coaches are gonna love you okay it's like you are gonna be so successful in high school football because you're actually like going the extra mile yeah. and all this shit because everybody's you know half-assing warm-ups and all that shit and like i love that guy that that coach by the way i see him all coaches the time. are amazing yeah, man dude. i have a lot of coaches i uh i've had a quite a few coaches over the years i have two that i just love man they're the grace yeah but um so basically, like you know, it, it got to a point where like the coaches' kids were playing a lot more than me, oh, which is that. which is obviously like something that happens. But this kid obviously didn't didn't want it as much as me, but he still played. And so one time, they were or the the coach the coach and the coach's kid were on vacation for a game. So I stepped in. Okay, Ooh. literally, I killed it. Okay. I was I was going crazy and even like even like the head lineman coach was like, dude, you killed it. Um, nice job, nice job stepping up. And then guess who didn't play again? <laughs> the, the Me. I didn't play oh, again. You didn't play again. Yeah. I was like, the Aw. coach's son got back in when he came back, Damn. and and he still was like playing like he didn't give a shit and that all happened. this. So like you know, like coming in late, you do you do face a lot of unfairness in the politics. Yeah. And like that's that's not one thing that's unfortunate about. Um, it doesn't matter if you're good in um, youth, youth or like like high school level stuff. Yeah. If you know the coach, you're gonna make it in. You don't even have to worry about tryouts. Yeah. You don't have to work worry about being good. You don't have to worry about playtime because it's already like a lot of for you because you already know where you're up against. It sounds like a very cliche thing. Like, oh man, it's just pot, but it's a real thing, man. Like, if you don't start off early, you don't have those connections. It's a hard thing to get into. Especially if you're still developing, like, whatever skills it is, football, basketball. Or if you're like me and, you know, you're, you're from one place and then you move to one place to grow up. And so you yeah, know nobody. I never had that issue. Grow, you know? I've basically been in Marseille for most of my life. Um, so I didn't really, that was never a thing. But that's like, yeah, that's a lot. Um, yeah, I remember in eighth grade, that was my, that was one of the biggest turning points. I think what it is, you said some stuff about like uh, people, like their, oh, their parents don't put them into sports. I think some people just don't have that fire. They don't have that dog in them, man. They don't got that dog in them. And I always felt like I had that. And then, but when I started playing sports is when I really like, motherfuckers, gotta have that mamba mentality, man. You, you know, I go, get in the mamba mentality. Yeah, a lot of people don't know they have that fire, bro. And if they do, sometimes they just don't activate it, you know? Well, some people, some people, like, get born, like, like kind of like that, but then they don't, like, I mean, some people don't have to earn well, it. Well, you also, you have the, you have the fire, the fire inside. I'm, like, not a literal yeah. fire, guys, but the fire inside the soul, the heart, but sometimes you don't have the intelligence. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, like, the intelligence to, uh, you know, how do I say this, actually put that fire to work. Well, no, you you gotta like you gotta chase what you want. You know what I mean. You gotta actually work yeah. for it. So like, it like should, there'll be people gonna be who to you. get crazy genetics and hella talent, but they don't put in the work. Or there's they're a piece of shit. That too. Yeah. That's a very real thing. Well, that's just that, that's more parenting. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's another big part of it. You know the ego with, with people that you know yeah. like like in the football field. It's like if you're big, you know what I mean. You're you're gonna think you're the shit, and like you're you're just gonna hurt people because like yeah. you're careless. You know what I mean? And you're gonna have like, a certain type of ego. That is not a good ego. When yeah, you're just a dumbass. I mean, that's never a good thing. But yeah, I think my my um, reminds your story reminds me a lot of my eighth grade year. Um, I remember I was thinking first game of the season when I was uh we were playing basketball, and I remember I think I played not even a minute into the game. Uh, and by the end of the season, I was starting damn near every game. But Ooh, yeah. Remember that? Cause I remember, dude. I remember just going home, playing every day. And I was like, dude, I was, yeah, I, I was the guy who went all out in practice, no matter what, man. I didn't feel good, and we go all out. Still, you gotta go all out. No days off, bro. Yeah. You can't come to practice thinking that's gonna be a day off. 
the coaches see that and then like you're screwed. Exactly. You're work. And thankfully that was one that was one of the coaches in my life that was like one of the really good ones. Yeah. And every once in a while I still talk to him this day. He was eighth grade coach. So yeah, he's a cool guy. And then yeah, you work hard and you'll if you have a good coach, you'll eventually get your time. And if not, people forget like people man, I hated hearing this shit throughout high school. People are like, Oh, I, I didn't play freshman year because the coaches sucked. What? Do you, it's either you, your fault. It's either you. Obviously, sometimes that is a factor. Sometimes but it's either you love the sport or you don't. And if you and you're saying you love it but you don't play because of the coach, you're just lying because it's like no matter what, you'll still do the effort and go through it all to get it done. And if, you, if it doesn't happen, so be it. But I feel like a lot of people, yeah, they're just not built for that. <laughs> people think they are something that they're not. I feel it. I feel that. But yeah, that's, that's enough rambling. Yeah, bunch I feel good. Of, bunch of sports talking. Yeah, sports talk. But yeah, it's, it's, it's important. Morality with X-Men and Pan. And Pan, man. I exactly. Um, yeah. What are, you, what are you feeling now? What do you mean? Like, you feeling you feeling this is good or not? Yeah, I'm feeling this good. Feeling this good? I, yeah. I think this is pretty good. Let's run it. Um, appreciate you guys watching Pan Pod today. Yeah. Um, pretty crazy. It, it was a good one. I, I hope that, you know, um, we worked at all the issues and st- stuff like that. Um appreciate you all for coming for yeah. you know this this weekly pan pod i know it's kind of tough for you guys because like you know uh you guys all watch this at your own pace and that's that's totally fine um but if you keep supporting the pan pod that'd be awesome go go make sure to check out x-man's links down in the description below as well as his new song blood on my hands oh yes please. um it's it's one of my favorites so it's pretty good oh, and yeah. uh yeah make sure to go uh subscribe to the youtube channel if you guys haven't already five star on apple podcasts and um Yeah, that's all from me. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching today, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.